Substances on the periodic table of the elements that share common traits can be grouped together. But how can we determine which elements belong to which group? A characteristic property is a distinctive trait that helps identify a substance. We can think of a characteristic property as its personality, since it helps us to distinguish it from the other elements. The objective of this lab is to classify various substances as either metals, metalloids, or non-metals. The materials that you'll need for this lab are a multimeter in order to measure electrical conductivity. You'll need seven test tubes and a test tube rack, a spatula, a beaker, some hydrochloric acid. We're using 0.2 moles per liter concentration. You'll need, in both granular format and in solid format, some carbon, some iron, nickel, magnesium, some silicone, sulfur, and zinc. We've already labeled our test tubes, and now we're going to fill them with the substances. Place a small quantity of each substance in a different test tube. Fill two-thirds of each test tube with hydrochloric acid. Observe and record any reactions between the substances and the acid. You may need to be patient, since some reactions are slower than others. Thermal conductivity can be observed by our sense of touch. If an object feels cold to the touch while at room temperature, then it draws heat from the skin. Verify thermal conductivity by using the back of your hand check the temperature of each of the objects. Record your results. Some substances can reflect light. This gives the substances a luster or shine. Observe the samples and determine which element possesses this property. Record your observations. Certain elements allow an electric current to pass through them and are called conductors. Other elements do not allow electricity to pass through them and they are called non-conductors or insulators. Using a multimeter, Verify if each substance conducts electricity. If the needle moves, then the substance is a conductor. Make sure to record your results. Some substances can be hammered into different shapes and are called malleable. If, however, the shape breaks when it is struck, then it is non-malleable. Try to bend the solid samples and then record your results. After conducting these experiments, we can conclude that the substances that passed all five tests are metals. The substances that failed all five tests are non-metals, and the substances that half passed and half failed the tests are metalloids. What characteristic properties did we observe in the seven samples? What tests did we conduct to observe these traits? And how were we able to classify the various substances as metals non-metals, and metalloids. You should now have a better understanding of how to classify the elements on the periodic table of elements using their characteristic properties.